acceptance point. Now, last but not least, the most deadly cardiomyopathy of them all. Not as common as dilated cardiomyopathy, but guys, this one is the biggest cause of sudden death in young active children. Now guys, since this is so deadly, it's usually diagnosed early in childhood because it's only caused by those darn genetics. Because remember little Timmy from our case study in the beginning of this video? Well, this is Timmy's condition. So let's break down exactly what Timmy's going through. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the must know for your exams, since it's the most deadly, and it's the most likely to be tested. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, think thick, huge, trophy-like heart. The heart becomes really thick and hard. Now the big issue here is that big fat thick trophy-like septum which limits the heart from filling. Guys, this means less blood in, so less blood out. And again, less cardiac output, this less oxygen out to the body. Now we have that with every condition, but here's where the deadly stuff happens all of a sudden. Our big thick cardiac muscle here where our trophy is starts to grow. This goes from not obstructing the aortic valve like during rest when there's no pressure on the heart to suddenly blocking all the oxidated blood 100% going out to the body. This happens during sudden straining like during exercise like running wind sprints and in soccer practice or even squatting down or bearing down like when lifting weights. This sudden strain on the heart causes more bulging out of that heart muscle. And this bulging out suddenly obstructs the aortic valve, blocking all oxygenated blood out to the body. Because guys, always remember, oxygen is the money of the body. No oxygen means no life. The body goes broke and dies. We're talking brain death, heart death, and even sudden death in a matter of minutes. And wait, the most scary part about this whole condition is that most kids don't even know they have it until it's too late. So guys, that's why it screens so early in life. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Well, we usually see no signs and symptoms until sudden strain on the heart. So it goes asymptomatic without signs and symptoms and usually undiagnosed. So kids go undiagnosed for years until they join a sport and then suddenly drop dead during this exercise as the heart obstructs that aortic valve and cuts off all oxygen to the body. So our signs and symptoms are gonna see low oxygen. We'll see shortness of breath and difficulty breathing, also called dyspnea. Low oxygen in the brain will see syncope or even dizziness and passing out. And low oxygen in the heart will have angina or even chest pain, ECG dysrhythmias, and even sudden death. Now as far as diagnostic tests to help Timmy here and all our future Timmys out there, guys, early detection is key to survival. Providers will listen to a very specific heart sound called a systolic ejection murmur. This murmur is present upon bearing down. So little Timmy will be asked to bear down and strain in the doctor's office as the provider listens to his heart. As far as imaging like a chest x-ray, guys, this is gonna be normal. But the echocardiogram, this guy will show septal wall thickening. Remember that big trophy in the center of our heart? Yeah, that thickening of the septal wall, think trophic. T for thickening, T for trophy. This is the trophic condition for little Timmy. Now labs can be used like a genetic blood test and even a biopsy to look for myofibril disarray. Now this is just a swirling and tangling of muscle fibers that get all clumped together like this. Kind of like tangling shoelaces of a cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscles are supposed to lay like this. Now as mentioned before, I'll mention again, genetics is the only indication here guys, so write that down, huge test tip. Again, kids are screened at a very, very young age. So guys, genetics, genetics, genetics. It usually always shows up on tests. Now to treat this, it's a very simple surgery called a myectomy. Basically, we just remove that little bulge inside the heart, kind of just slice it out. Now again, surgery is usually always done since the condition can flare up at any moment at any time, causing sudden death. Usually we don't mess around with this, so we go straight to surgery. But if for some reason the patient will be put on heart drugs, then we only give B and C drugs, like we reviewed earlier. Now B is for beta blockers. These guys end in LOL like a tenolol. They block beats in the heart, slowing it down, kind of like pumping the brakes on the heart. So guys, remember B for beta blockers, B for blocks beats, like pumping the brakes. So we kind of slow the heart rate. Now C is for calcium channel blockers, C for calms the heart. This guy drops the blood pressure. And the big ones for the NCLEX are nifedipine and dilantazem, brand name cardizem. So again, remember D-pine helps the blood pressure to decline. And zem for cardizem is kind of like zen yoga for the heart, calmed and relaxed. But guys, caution, we never give the three Ds. Big no-no for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So our three big Ds are D for dilators like nitro, 
D for digoxin, and D for diuretics. All these guys can worsen the obstruction and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So educate little Timmy to tell his doctor to avoid the three Ds. All right guys, now other common test questions come with safety and the NCLEX loves to test you on safety. So warning against strenuous activity like lifting heavy weights, bearing down to even poop, or even sudden position changes can cause an episode, ultimately leading to sudden death. So guys, teach a little Timmy about his next soccer practice to be safe and go slow. All right guys, that wraps it up for cardiomyopathy. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.